Bang! Knees and eyes. I'm Jared. My lovely wife Kara is at work, and today we are checking out the Pachinko Orbit. This is made by Pachinko and G and G Hawk. An amazing little knife and very unique. I'm going to try to do this review kind of quick because they're not making these, at least as of right now. I'm sure you can find them on the secondary market, but they do have the locking mechanism um, and other knives like the Kershaw and stuff like that. Um, I will insert a picture of the way the locking mechanism works here in just a moment. The blade steel is 204P and the knife is made in the USA. So... They call this a, uh, I think a sheep's foot. I consider this more of like a Spanish tip razor or just like a razor. Now it's also very similar because it has a full hollow grind, which that is an amazing thing to me. You do not see that very often where the hollow starts at the spine. It is a very tiny flat up at the top, but it basically is a full hollow and you can see it right there. It gets down to very thin. I think it was uh, 16 thousandths behind. Yeah, it was like 16 thousandths behind the edge. And then the spine is 140 thousandths thick. So great geometry, amazing geometry. You see the stop pins, they are on the blade right there. They lock up right there. Beautiful sharpening choil that just works. Now you see the plunge grind how you see the two lines right there. Now, it still does pass the plunge grind quite a bit. That secondary line is just um, the tapering of the steel. Beautiful stone washing. And I will say it goes through material very nicely. I did use it lightly, but I did use it. Now, let's get into the handle. So, it's got a very neutral handle um it's very organic in the hand because it's just it has a such a natural feeling and the reason why is because of this right here so when you hold something you hold it like that and basically this area right here is perfect for four fingers and then your finger your thumb just lands right there it feels so it's hard to explain how how uh, comfortable this knife is and how natural it feels in the hand. It really does. It just feels like this position right here was built for a hand. Even if you like lay your hand all the way across the spine, it just feels so good. Even back here, just like this. I mean, this thing is amazing, amazing in the hand. And then when you're using it, your, your blade is tilted down towards the objects or should I say facing the objects that you are cutting so it just naturally is in the position where you want it um it it cuts really good it fits really good in the hand this this thing's pretty awesome um even right here under the flipper tab it's just nice and comfortable you do feel this little um spot right here where the stop pins close in at, I guess the stop for the close position, just a little bit, but it doesn't bother you at all. And you can't, you don't want to put your finger up here because the sharpening trail is just a sharpening trail, not a finger trail at all, but you don't need to. And if you really want to do some push cuts, when you put it in your hand, right, without going like this with your thumb, when you just put it in your hand, it kind of tilts towards the thing you're pushing. So, it works even for a push cut. Now the clip, if it'll focus, is a titanium mill clip. It works good. I mean, no, no real complaints. I mean, some people might not think it sits that deep because you do have the blade and the handle sticking out, you know, that far. Um, it is nicely, beautifully centered. The back spacer, you can see is heat anodized. And let's look at it from the inside because it looks really good when the light hits it just right. You can see the blues and the purples popping out of the back spacer. I do like that heat anodized look. It looks really, really good. Um, the carbon fiber is done very well. You see the, Ser the Serge Panchico logo and then the G&G &G Hawk logo. But when you tilt a certain ways, it disappears. So you got to hit it just right and then it pops out. So let me explain this lock really quick. 
So there's two pins right here. And then there's no, there's no way to unlock it from this side. It is only right here. It's kind of like pulling down an access lock, but the locking system is nothing like an access lock. So it has two pins that are on springs. I'm going to show you a picture that I took from OCD for EDC's channel. He did a takedown of a Kershaw that uses the same locking mechanism. So you can go check his video out if you want to. I forget the name of the Kershaw, but it's the Kershaw with the G&G &G Hawk Lock. So the two pins are right here. That's breaking one of the pins or, you know, getting past one of the pins that acts like the detent. And then the second one locks it in place. So then the two click up and basically lock it right into place um and then when you pull it down it pulls the pins down and you can you know lock it in place the, the second pin is still going to be there so when you pull it down it releases the first pin there's the second pin but you can overcome it with a little swing even if you let go of the button you can still overcome it with a little bit of pressure or you can leave it pulled down and it'll click or it'll stop right there if you don't do it heavy it'll just stop and you gotta lock it in place let's get into this action because it's possibly the best part about this knife you know the ergos the, there's a lot of things that are good about this knife but this action is amazing so the flipper tab you know it sits up here so you feel like it's going to be uh, a top flipper or a uh, you know a front flipper but it's really not it's really just a regular flipper and the way it feels it's kind of hard to explain because it like it kind of feels like cocking a hammer but it just it flies out as soon as you break this and i'm going to lightly do it so you see it just pop as soon as you break that which is if you looked at the locking mechanism is um the first like uh pin as soon as you break that it just goes and then you have a little bit of like resistance right here, but um, when it's flying, it passes it up. But if you listen to, this is all the mechanical sounds it has. Listen to this. First detent, second one, or second uh, pin. It's a very mechanical sound, but as soon as you break that first one, it just flies. And the way it feels in the flipper tab area when you land right here, it's so comfortable. And then right here, the knife comes right up and lands right underneath your finger. And it just has such a comfortable feeling. It's it's hard to explain. Even if I was sitting here, you know, explaining it to myself, it still would feel so much more awesome than I could ever explain it. It is a, like a light switch kind of, you know, because obviously you can't really push button it. But, you know, when you light switch it, you kind of just let your finger land right there. Very comfortable. Then when you let it drop, let's talk about releasing the lock. So the lock, it can stop right there. And that's basically it hitting the first pin. And then you can click it right in. Very clicky. But you can easily give it just a little swing and it'll lock right in place. Even if you don't swing it, as long as you do the locking mechanism just right, it'll lock in place. You just basically got to time it just right. And then even if it pops out like that, you can still open it right up because you have so much leverage from up here. Because normally when you get leverage from a flipper tab, it's because the flipper tab is a little bit higher than the center of the pivot. This is the React K2. So it gives you really good action when the flipper tab is placed right. This one is way higher. So you have so much leverage pulling it down. It's so unique and it feels so good. Even this, doing that way, it feels really good. Just clicking it right in. Super, super fidgety. Now, another perk is you can easily middle finger flick it. I mean, like, easily. Because you have this little ridge up here. Even though it is a full hollow, like I said, it has that little tiny, tiny bit of flat at the very top of the spine. You can use that right behind on the side of your finger and just... 
It's so easy to do. You can technically do, go off of the um, the stop pin and it'll, you know, with the reverse flick and stuff, but it's not that easy, but you can do it sometimes. But why? Why do that when it's so easy to just naturally put your finger right where it lays? So right where you hold it, bang. Super duper fidgety. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So what are some bad things? So there's only a couple and there's really not that many. So one thing is, is you got this nice big, the big hardware here, up here on top. Then you got this little tiny guy down here. Um, I think it's a T5 or something. It's very tiny. Now, I'm sure that's just holding this plate on. I did not take it apart. It's not that big of a deal. But if you ever wanted to service it, you're still going to have to deal with it, even if it is only holding on this plate and T8s are underneath, which I don't know that's true. But I'm saying even if that was the case, point is, is that, you know, it's very tiny. And then on the clip, they gave you good hardware. They give you T8s on the hardware right here, so that's awesome. Um, I think this is T10 up here on the pivot. It's something like that. It's bigger than a T8, though. It's nice and big. Now, um, the next uh, thing, this lanyard hole. I don't mind the lanyard hole. I think it's fine. You know, this might be a knife that people might want a lanyard hole. But the thing is, is the thing about if you did have a lanyard there, right? Now... This is how you hold it. So you're gonna have a lanyard pushing out of the handle into your palm. That's not really, it doesn't logically make sense to me because it's it's literally gonna be in the way of having great ergos. Now, if it was like right here and came out, it wouldn't do that, as you can see, but where it's placed is basically just right where you're gonna be holding it, not that big of a deal. And there are lots of different grips, but all of them seem to run into that, uh, you know, that area. So, um, except for the reverse, you know, pull grip. Next bad thing, clip works great, um, but like I said, you do have a little bit of the blade hanging out of your pocket. So, you know, like you, you do have this coming out of your pocket and also, another little bad thing is this little bit of play. Now, I know it's because of the way the locking mechanism is. So, I, I don't, it's not like detent lash, but you know, it's just the way the locking mechanism is. But you do have a little bit of bounce. So, like up to right there is before it's about to click out. So, there's a little bit of play after it's locked in, but it, it is still sucking itself in. So, like if I pull it out and let it go, you see it's sucking itself in. Not that big of a deal. These are little tiny, tiny nitpicks. Most likely that's just the way the lock is designed and how it's going to be. And there's no way around it. So I, I'm not really, that's not even really that big of a complaint. It's just something to note. In my humble opinion is, okay, so when I try to check for blade play or lock rock, I should say, it has a, a little tiny bit of movement in the lock. Let me see if I can show you without, because I don't want to keep doing it or anything like that. I, let me just be clear about this. I don't think that this lock is weak in any way. I also don't think it's an extremely strong locking mechanism. I don't know. But I would say that this is not a very strong locking mechanism, but that it's just fine for EDC and just fine for use. I'm not saying it's sitting here wiggling. It's very tight, okay? But if I do put some oomph going that way, I get a little tiny smidgen of, I feel like that pin, the first pin in the lock, I feel like it's just barely shifting. But... It's very subtle. Let me see if I can do it this way. Anyways, not that big of a deal. And in all reality, like I said, when I just chuck it like this, how you see a lot of people on channels do just, it doesn't do anything. It's fine. I have to actually muscle it a little bit. And you can see. Now, also, if I flick it a couple times, it actually gets stronger. So that's actually a good thing. And then when I come back to it, it's actually pretty strong, right? So if I sit there and do it, 
it feels like it gets um, not worse and worse, but it feels like I can get more and more shift out of it. But the second I start fidgeting with it, it's like it uh, locks itself back up nice and strong, which is a good thing. Kind of like a button lock. A button lock should do that because it's on a spring and the spring is constantly pushing that lock into position. So anyways, very, very, very cool knife. Um, I'm actually very happy I got to check this out and play with it. That is all the bad things. I mean, this thing is pretty amazing. And those are very small details to... Oh, man, that detent. Listen to it. This is probably the most satisfying fidget knife I've felt and some of the best sounds I've felt out of a knife. Um... There you guys go. Thanks, Floydian. Thank you guys for watching. I love all of you. Peace.